Hello, my name is Carol Billing-Smith. I'm a consultant gynaecologist and a fertility specialist. I'm the medical director at the Agora Clinic in Brighton in the UK. Today I'm going to speak to you about the approaches we take in the UK and Europe for patients who have a diagnosis of HIV or hepatitis B or C. I've been involved with patients with blood-borne viral disease for over 20 years and in the UK I developed the first programme to help HIV positive men and then later women conceive safely. Back in those days a lot of patients who were diagnosed with HIV had detectable viral loads in the blood and could tr transmit HIV to their partner and also to their unborn child. So for men we would treat them with sperm washing and be extremely careful uh, during pregnancy when positive women were carrying a baby to try and reduce the risk of them passing virus to their baby, particularly at birth. Things have changed a great deal and where we are now with all these viral diseases is in a much safer place and we are able to use antiretroviral treatment to try and help people bring down their viral load to undetectable levels. So the first thing that's important to remember is that all these conditions really need you to be managed by a, an infectious disease specialist who can guide you on whether medication is available to try and reduce the viral load and reduce your risk of transmission to your partner, particularly when trying to conceive, or to your unborn child. And with an infectious disease specialist on board, you can then discuss with them your plans to conceive and what you'd like help with in the future. Infectious disease specialists often work very closely with fertility specialists and I certainly work hand in hand um, with all our specialists in virology and really try to understand what a patient wants to try and achieve. So we're going to go through each virus in turn just to go through what we do here in the UK and in Europe. So starting with HIV, the first thing is diagnosis and assessment. We are required to screen for HIV, hepatitis B and C for all patients undergoing assisted conception treatment such as IVF and I'm sure that's the same in other countries because it's a, it's a legal requirement. That's often the time that patients have been diagnosed as positive but other patients have had their diagnosis for other reasons. Once you've been diagnosed, if you do wish to conceive, the best route with HIV is to go on to an antiretroviral treatment to bring your viral load down to undetectable levels. And you are then in a very safe position to try and conceive naturally as if you didn't have any infectious disease. Once you've been put on to antiretroviral treatment and have had tests to confirm that you don't have detectable virus, in the blood then you can try and conceive naturally you can have unprotected intercourse and this is this has transformed the lives of, of couples where one partner is positive for HIV and once you try to conceive there shouldn't be any difficulty as a result of your condition however if you haven't conceived after six months or 12 months depending on your age particularly if you're female you should perhaps seek help sooner I would urge you to get some fertility investigations done. Um, in some cases, you might know that you have a fertility issue. For, for example, if your cycle is irregular or if you know that you have blocked fallopian tubes. HIV is not a reason to have fertility treatment. If you need fertility treatment because you've got a fertility issue, then if you're HIV positive, you should have access to all of the same treatments as if you were HIV negative. We choose the treatment based on your fertility factors. If you are HIV negative, you would have IVF if you had blocked tubes, or you would have ICSI if your partner had sperm issues, and the same applies if you're HIV positive. If for any reason you find you have a fertility issue and you have not yet had the chance to start antiretroviral treatment, and time does not allow you to have antiretroviral treatment, perhaps age is not on your side, then in such a case, 
an additional step might be used during the IVF or the IUI procedure called sperm washing. And during that process, the sperm is treated with a special density gradient and subsequently washed to try and remove any HIV. Sperm washing was the, the mainstay of treatment 20 years ago, but since we have now very effective antiretroviral treatment, it is very rarely needed in normal practice. There is no vaccination to protect against HIV. So one of the important factors to consider if you're a female and you're becoming uh, pregnant is what will the risk be to the child. Again, if you are on antiretroviral treatment before you start trying to conceive, there is no concern. That treatment will continue and will be closely monitored during pregnancy with potentially a change in the type of medication as you go through pregnancy. You don't need caesarean delivery and you will be advised uh, at the time of delivery if additional precautions are required for your baby. We know that HIV is a major global health issue and that up to 60% of those living with HIV are in the WHO African region. The prevalence of HIV is lower in Europe and in the UK. What is good news is that at least 60% of people living with HIV globally are now on antiretroviral treatment. And the aim is for that figure to be 90%. And certainly it is achieving 90% in the more developed countries, such as the UK and uh, Europe. Hepatitis B is a significant concern with regards to chronic liver disease. And for that reason, you should always be assessed when you're diagnosed and be under the care of an infectious disease specialist. With hepatitis B, there is a vaccination available and therefore your partner should be vaccinated if they are not uh, hepatitis B positive and that will protect them. Once they have shown a good antibody response to hepatitis B, you can try and conceive naturally at no risk at all. During pregnancy, there, is, there are no additional measures to take, but once the baby is born, then the baby will be vaccinated. And in some cases, there will be additional immunoglobulin, hepatitis B immunoglobulin or antibody to hepatitis B given to the baby after birth to protect them until the vaccine is fully effective. IVF or ICSI are not measures that we use to avoid passing hepatitis B to your partner or to the unborn child. They are there uh, for treating fertility conditions. So just as we did with HIV, if you haven't conceived after six to 12 months, you should seek fertility tests and be assessed as to whether there is something wrong and whether you should have any form of assisted conception. During the process of assisted conception, no additional steps need to be taken. And the sperm, in the case of a hepatitis B positive male, will be processed on density gradient in the normal way as we do with um, hepatitis B negative patients. This is because hepatitis B is removed by that process and you don't need to take additional steps. Hepatitis C is again a cause of chronic liver disease and there are now some very effective treatments that can be given to try and reduce the viral load to undetectable levels, which is what would be an ideal scenario if you're trying to conceive. First of all, get treatment uh, so that you have undetectable levels. That means you can't pass hepatitis C to your partner or to your unborn child. The vertical transmission risk is removed. If there isn't time to have uh, a course of treatment, um, bearing in mind that the treatments are not suitable to be used uh, during conception and pregnancy, then it is important to consider the risk. There is no additional risk uh, passing hepatitis C sexually to your partner through intercourse, therefore you can conceive naturally. Again, it doesn't matter if it's the man or the woman who's infected. If you don't conceive naturally, as in the case of HIV and hepatitis B, you need to have fertility testing in the appropriate way to decide if there are fertility factors that need treating with either insemination, IVF or ICSI. 
there is a significant vertical transmission risk if you have detectable virus in the blood with hepatitis C and there isn't a vaccination available. So for the newborn baby, the risk of them acquiring a hepatitis C uh, at birth is of the order of 6% if you have detectable virus in the blood. You do not need to have a delivery by caesarean section and you don't need to avoid breastfeeding and that is also the case for hepatitis B. My final point really is to outline where we're going with HIV and hepatitis B and C. We can now treat heterosexual couples very safely and the chances of having a successful outcome with assisted conception such as IVF or ICSI is exactly the same as if you were not infected with HIV or hepatitis B or C. However, if you're in a same-sex gay male relationship and you want to use your sperm in a surrogacy arrangement, or if you are in a same-sex lesbian relationship and you want to donate eggs to your partner, these are known donation situations. The current law in the UK and Europe does not allow you to be a sperm or egg donor and doesn't allow you to be a surrogate either. And that is a limitation which uh, needs to be addressed. Since the very effective U equals U campaign, uh, the world has, become to, has come to understand that if you are currently an HIV positive patient on antiretroviral medication, and you have undetectable viral loads, you are sexually non-infectious. And the normal common practice is for you to try and conceive naturally. But when you can't, as you can't in these situations of same-sex relationships, then the correct treatment is to go to a clinic to seek assisted conception. So the law has to change, the law has to come and realise the actual infectious nature of HIV when there is an undetectable viral load in the blood. And hopefully the future will be a lot brighter for patients um, such as gay men who want to have a family just like anybody else.